Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. So today's video is phase five and we're nearing the completion of the case three series that I'm doing on the Air Warfare Group. This is Juice by the way and today's video is going to be kind of short. I'm going to go through some slides as normal uh, for these uh, practice videos to show you how I practice it. Uh, not meant to be a tutorial, but more to give you information to chew on while you're practicing and digging in your information. So let's get on with the briefing. So in phase five, we're inside one nautical mile and we're going to fly the ball and needles. Uh, actually, I should say we're going to fly the needles and the ball. So this phase is pretty much uh, the final phase down to the touchdown or the bolter or, um, or uh, wave off. And this phase is pretty short, and it, like I said, it's the, the smallest part of the uh, approach, I would say. But the dynamics of it are pretty intense, and I'll show you why. Because you're flying in weather, you're flying with, um, you know, reduced visibility, and you have a lot of information you're trying to process in a short amount of time. And the margin of error is so low that if you're off by a few hundred yards on your approach, it could be disaster. Before I get started, uh, in the uh, meat and potatoes. Let's look at some of the references. I recommend everybody go to the DCS supercarrier module. Uh, the, the, if you go to your, your documents, you'll find in mods, tech, supercarrier, you'll see the uh, docs, and in there you'll see the guide. Read through that first. That's uh, kind of the best uh, reference to start with because the game is set on this logic or this fundamental uh, information. Uh, it, it takes from the real world references, but it doesn't match it totally exactly. So you'd want to start here. Then I would go over to the CV NATOPS manual and the FA-18 uh, Hornet manual that you can find online. Now if you Google Sinatra Pat Pubs, you can find the Sinatra uh, uh, training links to all the pubs that they have that are available open source there. Now if you click on down at the bottom right, if you click on the privacy policy, you'll find this and you'll see in paragraph two that all the information on this site is public domain may be, and may be distributed or copied unless otherwise specified. Uh, used of appropriate byline photo image credits is requested. So if you guys, I got this, I'm going to tell you right now, I got this from the website. So I'm giving them credit. But you guys are free to use this stuff. It's not, uh, it's not classified information. It's not sensitive information. It's not for official use only. Um, you, if you read further down there, you can see where you can get in trouble by doing certain things like trying to upload malicious stuff uh, to their website and stuff like that. So, Okay, moving along. So when you get to one nautical mile and you're all set up and you've done the approach correctly, this is the picture you're going to be looking for. You're pretty much going to try to get to the point where you're here and you're going to try to fly the needles uh, until you can see the ball. Now I've already drug the in-HUD ball or the, the fake ball uh, Eiffels that it comes up on the screen. I've already drugged that out of the way because you don't see that in real life so I like to practice what picture I have with the needles and what I can see of the ball out there. Sometimes I have to read my or put on my reading glasses to see it. Now if you look over on the left DDI I have the ADI uh, page up. That gives me the needles and it gives me a good picture as a backup. If I lose my, lose my HUD now, I can at least look over to the left and glance down there. And you know what? I'm always cross-checking that anyway to make sure that I'm in the right, uh, in the right parameters uh, just to make sure that my HUD's not feeding me information that's not correct. Uh, or vice versa. If I'm seeing a picture outside and the HUD looks good but the ADI looks good, I'm going to ignore the ADI and write it up in the forms later. Down on the right side on the DDI, I've got my HSI page up and on that I've got it scaled to five miles. I've got the course line set for the final approach uh, bearing which is 346 and you can see that I'm a little bit right of the lineup and we'll fix that when we go into the video. You'll see what we do. Moving along, the uh, HUD is probably pretty important on this approach because it keeps your eyes outside the cockpit and into the windscreen. So you're going to be focusing back and forth to what you see in the environment and what you see in your instruments and in the HUD. So if you look at the HUD, there's two critical pieces of information that are given to you in the HUD, your water line and your velocity vector. The water line is the physical point of boresight that the nose of the aircraft is pointing. That's where the aircraft's true line, true datum line, or whatever you want to call it, is pointing into space. Now you can see we're nose high at about five or six degrees here. 
The velocity vector, however, is the energy state or the energy position where the airplane would go if left unchanged and unpower changed. So if you don't pitch and you don't change power, that's where the velocity vector will go. And you can see if we didn't change anything right now, we'd fly past the ship and slightly over to the right of the island or starboard side. So we're at one nautical mile right here and you can see how far we are out. Uh, by this point in your approach practice, you should already know where the airspeed, the compass ribbon, the pitch ladder, and the uh, altimeter is on the HUD. Everything else is, uh, is pretty much easy information. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, give me, a, give me a comment and I'll be sure to respond back to you. Moving over here, now we're going to use these two needles in the front. And you notice those were duplicated in the left EDI. The top needle or the top reference is a vertical needle and that vertical needle is the on center line or also known as localizer at an air, airstrip but that tells you how lined up you are with the uh, approach on the center line of the runway or the touchdown area. The lower reference on the left side is the on glide path and the glide path is how high you are in space if you were on that three to three and a half degree line coming down to the deck. You can see that we are slightly to the right of the line right here, and we are we are right on on uh, horizon or right on glide path. So the key to this this approach is to use your trim to get your water line or your your water line to match where you want it to be, and you want it to be at five degrees. You, you can be a little bit off and on. You can fine tune that with your hand, but you want to use your trim to uh, put that so that your water line stays up at the five degree line. Now your velocity vector, remember that's always changing, that's dependent on the power of the aircraft. And the way you want to change that is use your left hand or your throttles to reduce power to make that come down and you, and you increase power to make that climb. So if you're a little bit low of the needle, uh, let's say you're a little bit low, you might want to pull, uh, push power up so you climb up and let the needle come into your velocity vector circle. If you're a little bit high, you might want to pull back power and let it come down. But you never want to pull back power and just leave it off, and you never want to push the power and leave it up. You're always changing your power. The other indicators that are pretty important, but you don't need to use them as a constraint, is the E bracket and the AOA indexer. Now those are informational. They don't really tell you, hey, you should be here, you should see this yellow circle, you should see this E bracket and velocity band velocity vector alignment. They, that's, a, that's an optimum case one approach. If you're on the, you know, flying down, you can do it from 20,000 feet if you have enough uh, reception on the signals. However, what those are, those are there for is to indicate where you are and where your energy state is uh, as far as the approach. So you don't need to say, hey, you know, I'm not, my E bracket's not lined up or I don't have a true uh, on-speed AOA indication, well that would be correct if you were making changes or trying to get into the position. So again, I put in a note here, use the AOA indexer and the e-bracket. Use it as a tool, not as a, as a cr constraint that you have to get into because those inf the information that you're going to get from those are going to help you get into the right space and time. And then eventually when you line up, that's when you're going to be uh, in the sweet spot. Okay, so that's it for the slideshow. Let's go into the flight real quick, and we'll consume, uh, we'll uh, conclude this video very shortly. So, all right, let's go to this, and I put up the controls indicators uh, indicator for you guys, so you can see what my controls are doing. If you want to look at that over and over, uh, I don't fly with it, but I do put it up for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's unpause now. So remember, we're at one mile. So I go ahead and call the ball. I can see it now. Barely. I'm doing a little wobble with the stick. I'm trying to get that trim just right. A little high. So I pull the power back to let it drop down. And then I give the power back, give some power in. Push it in a little bit. There we go. And power, full power, full power. Nice. Good lineup. I got a high in the middle, wire two, ease guns in the wire. And I get ease guns in the wire quite a bit. And I think what it is is I don't go to full power when I should. So that's pretty much it. If you guys want to see that, uh, again, just play it back. Uh, again, this is not a tutorial. It's just a guide to help you break down the case three practice into segments. And I call them phases. And it allows you to uh, practice little sections at a time. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video. Be sure to share it with a friend if you think it will help and provide your feedback and comments. We, uh, we love hearing from you guys and we hope to see you real soon in the next video. Everybody be safe. Cheers.